Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1. Let us therefore be cautious, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For to us was the good news preached as well as to them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith. Everybody say faith. faith. Not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into rest. As he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world, for he spoke in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest on the seventh day from all his works. Hallelujah. How many know we need to mix all of the word with faith? How many know there is a promised land? Even today, there is a land that flows with milk and honey for you. There, there is so many wonderful promises, precious promises in the Word of God. And here it's talking about everything was finished on the seventh day and God rested. How many know that when Jesus went to the cross, He cried out, It is finished. <laughs> Hallelujah. The same finish that was in the garden literally is the same finish that was on the cross in the sense that now that we walk by faith and not by sight and God has promised us a garden filled with blessing. Come on somebody. I tell you what, it is finished. It is finished. Jesus paid the price for everything you need. I don't, I don't know what you're going through this morning, but whatever it is, Jesus says, it is finished. Hallelujah. It's done. I mean, everything that you need is already, it's already available. It's already available, but we've got we've to believe. And we've got to press in. And we've got to do it by faith. Come on, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. We've got to enter into His rest. We've got to enter into the rest that it's done. It, it, it's ready for you. It's, there's something good with your name on it this morning. Come on. There's something great with your name on it this morning. Turn with me now over here to Matthew chapter 6. Let's get into this. Matthew chapter 6. And uh, we'll start in the 28th verse. Thank you, Lord. Matthew chapter 6, and let's go down here, verse 28. And why take you thought? Why are you concerned? Why, why are you worrying uh, over your clothes? <laughs> Come on, women. Now, uh, it says, it says, and why take you thought of, of raiment, clothes? Consider the lilies, just consider. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not. Everybody say, toil not. They toil not, neither do they spin. How many know that uh, uh, the curse involved toil? Uh, the sweat of the brow, that, that we would have to do it on our own. But how many know that, that through Jesus, God made a way where now we go forth, <laughs> hallelujah, with Jesus, come on, and all things are possible. I said all things are possible. I don't know what you're believing for this morning, but it's possible. Hallelujah. I mean, God, God's got oh, so many wonderful things, but we've got to believe and we've got to enter in by faith. We've got to take hold of these things. And here it's talking about not toiling. You know, the, 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 the flowers, they're not toiling. They're not saying, where am I going to get my next uh, rainfall? Let me tell you something. It's about to rain. Amen. It's about to rain. It rains on the lilies. It's going to rain on your house. Amen. Whatever you're waiting on, it's going to rain. And God's going to do it. And you just rest in there. Praise God. You know, there's nothing like a, a, a soft spring rain. Amen. You know, uh, you don't mind, uh, you know, uh, you know, you might mind when tornadoes going by, but it... <laughs> 
<laughs> but I mean, if it's, it's just a, a nice rain, it's watering all your flowers and maybe you got a little garden out back and and uh, it's just it's doing it for you I mean you're not you're not you're not you're not having to lug out that hose come on somebody I mean <laughs> it's just watering for you it's it's blessing you well God is about to open up the windows of heaven he's about to rain down on your house and all you got to do I mean you don't do anything to cause it to rain you don't wake up and say, well, I got to do something. I got to I got to put, you know, some type of chemical in the clouds. And <laughs> no, <laughs> you just you just sit back and say, thank you, Lord, for the rain. Amen. That's what the lilies do. I mean, the lilies are not trying to figure out how to do this. They're just thank you. Thank you that the windows are open. Thank you that it's raining. Amen. Oh, it's about to rain. It's there. It's there. Mm, there's bright clouds. And God's about to rain down on your house good things. Amen. Hallelujah. Now notice what it says. Let's go on here. It says, And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more, everybody say much more, much more. clothe you, O you of little Faith. So in other words, faith is the factor. Verse 31. Therefore, take no thought. Don't worry. Don't be concerned. It's going to rain. If there's something good going to happen. Uh, you, you don't have to live in lack. You don't have to live, uh, you know, in drought. Uh, God is about to bless you. Come on, somebody. Take no thought, don't worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or where shall, shall, shall we be clothed? For all these things do the Gentiles seek, for, for your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. Things, <laughs> Hallelujah. How many know that you've, you've been sitting there stressing out? And you've been wondering, how's this going to work? How are we going to do this? Isn't it wonderful to know that your heavenly Father knows what you need? Right. You're not on your own in this. You're not, well, you know, I, we're just going to have to figure this out. And, and I get that way. I got, I got to tell you, I'm a go-getter. I just, I get in there and I'm going to make it work no matter how, you know. And, and sometimes you need to just step back a little bit <laughs> and, and let God be God. Amen. Because God's going to do it bigger than what you can do. Amen. What you can do is good. What God can do is better. So sometimes, and that doesn't mean that you sit back and you go to sleep. Right. <laughs> unless it's time for a nap. <laughs> but what that means is, is that you're not concerned. You're not in worry. You're not in stress. You're not stressing yourself out trying to make it work. Amen. That's toil. Okay. Now you, you enter in and you say, Lord, what do I, what's my part in this? What do I need to do? And I'll be faithful and I'll be obedient to do that. And as you're obedient, <laughs> it's about to happen. Amen. And you're about to see it. And God will just, and you'll say, wow, I didn't, I didn't, I, I didn't do anything. All I did was show up. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, you don't have to do much when you're in the right place at the right time. Amen. God's about to put you in the right place at the right time for advancement. God's about to bless you big time. Glory be to God. How I many know oh, God's just in the blessing business? Amen. Hallelujah. The devil's in the cursing business. And I, and I saw that he was going out of business. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> look, at, look what it says. Uh, verse 33. Uh, well, verse 32 says, Your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. Verse 33. But seek you first... The kingdom of God Amen. and his right standing that you you're in right righteousness. You're in right standing to receive uh, and, and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek first. Somebody say seek, seek. First. first. Seek first the kingdom. 
The kingdom is God's way of doing things. The kingdom is God's wisdom. If you're in the kingdom, you want to do it the kingdom way. Amen. If you're in the world, you better not be doing it the world's way. <laughs> How many know that we are in this world, but we're not of it? Amen. We're of a different kingdom. And we're of a different system. And if we'll do it God's way, it's going to work. Amen. So it says, seek first God's way of doing it. Well, how am I going to get the clothes? How am I going to get the house? How am I going to go to how, how, how? <laughs> Seek first God's way of doing it. Yeah. And then he'll give you the wisdom. Everybody say wisdom. wisdom. He'll give you the wisdom on what to do, how to do it, where to go. And, and the wisdom will be there. And you're just like, wow, <laughs> God, God loves you enough that he's trying to get the wisdom to you. Hallelujah. But you've got to seek it. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're seeking God's way of doing things. Hallelujah. You know, when um, we were putting together this church, I, uh, we were meeting in the, uh, the school. And I said to the Lord, I don't want to meet in the school longer than a year. I don't want to drag it out in the school. The school is just a place to get things, you know, get people to know we're going to try to do something. Everybody told me there's not a building. But when I spent time with the Lord, He said there's a building. Amen. I entered into a rest. There's a building. There was other pastors in town who told me I was nuts. They said there's no building. Uh, there was real, real estate agents, no building. How many know? We're in a building. Come on, somebody. Uh, uh, we, we went out to look for chairs to put into this building, and they were going to be thousands of dollars. Well, we said, Lord, uh, you're, you're going to provide. You're going to provide. And, and at the time, I thought he's going to provide the thousands of dollars for the chairs. Well, the very next day, everybody say next day. Next day. I, I went on Facebook and there was someone giving away pews. Come on, somebody. Now, how many know it was raining? Come on, somebody. It was raining through this whole thing. Everything, I mean, we go on about all the things that were involved in, in moving in here. But let me tell you something. God will rain <laughs> when you think there is no rain. When everybody in town tells you you're in drought, it's raining on your house. Amen. Glory to God. It is about, it's about to rain. The windows are about to open up. There's something good that's coming to your house. There's something so great and so wonderful. And all you've got to do is believe. Yes. You've got to enter into your promised land. You've got to just take a step and, and, and cross your Jordan. Amen. You can't just sit there and say, well, you know, it, it's never going to work out. I don't see it. I can't see it. I don't know how it's going to happen. Your God is big enough. Amen. How big is your God this morning? My God's a big God. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Your God is a big God. Hallelujah. Amen. I mean, I, I think about it. <laughs> the trees next door, that whole lot next door that you don't see any trees on, when we moved in here, that whole lot going all the way to Yellow Jacket was solid trees and you could not see this building at all. Those trees had been there probably 100 years. I don't know. I mean, they'd been there a long time. They're big trees. Big trees. We moved in. I think it was just the next week, within days, they came out and started cutting them down. <laughs> I mean, they'd been there forever. As long as Rockwall, you know, it, when the very first giant was here in Rockwall, they were here. <laughs> but they, they, when did they cut them down? When did we show up? We didn't, I didn't even ask for the trees to be cut down. There will be times where you don't even have anything to do with it. You're in rest just believing that God is doing things. Amen. God will work out things in, in, in detail. Yes. Details that you didn't think about right. that God already thought about from the foundation of the world for you. Come on. Amen. But He's looking for some faith. He's looking for some to mix it with some faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Two 
with me to Psalm 104. Hallelujah. 104th Psalm. And let's go down here to uh, verse 19. The 104th Psalm, verse 19. He appointed the moon for the seasons, the sun knows it's going down. You make darkness and, and, and it's, uh, it's night, wherein all the beasts of the forest do creep forth. The young lions roar after their prey and seek their meat from the forest. No, it doesn't say that, does it? It says that they seek their meat from God. Come on, somebody. Even the beasts of the field, and every, everything is relying on the Creator. Hallelujah. Now notice, the young... Uh, the sun rises, they gather themselves together, and lay, uh, lay them down in their dens. Man goes forth to his work and to his labor until the evening. Doesn't say he's expecting much. I mean, he, he's over in toil. Verse 24. O Lord, how manifold, and that manifold is not just many, it, it's, it's multiplied. O Lord, how multiplied are your works in wisdom. Everybody say wisdom. wisdom. Let me know we're seeking God's way of doing things. Amen. O Lord, how manifold are your works in wisdom. Have you made them all? The earth is full of your riches. <laughs> Glory to God. I tell you what, the whole earth is filled with the abundance of God. So is this great and wide sea. And it goes on and innumerable and, and on and on. I mean, <laughs> manifold riches of God. Now, in context here in this chapter, it's talking about God has already provided it. Amen. How many know you don't have to invent gold? Right. <laughs> How many know you don't have to invent? <laughs> you don't have to invent a lot of the things that are already here that God already placed in this earth, and He put them there for His children. Amen. Hallelujah. Just hid those things here and there. That's like Christmas morning when, when we'd hide things for the girl. We didn't want them to know everything we were getting them. You know, hide the gift behind this. And, oh, there's one more. <laughs> you know, you'd get them, they'd be looking around. You know, they're thinking. And, and Amy and, and, and Andrea, they'd be smiling like, thank you. But they're thinking, I wanted that, you know, whatever it was that they really wanted. And, and uh, but they think it's all they think everything is open. Oh, I think there's one more <laughs> hidden behind the, you know, the couch over here. Well, well, how many know God has hidden beautiful riches? Amen. He had he I mean, glory be to God. And somebody say, well, I don't know about all that riches stuff and all that money stuff. Wait, we don't need any of that. Well, go live under a bridge. <laughs> You know, you know you don't believe that. Come on. <laughs> How many know that God wants to bless you so you can be a blessing? Amen. 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 You can't be a blessing until you're blessed. Uh, I, pe people think, well, I, I, you know, I, I just want enough for me. That's called <laughs> greed. Only wanting enough for yourself is called greed. Right. i got to make this very clear when we talk about these things. We've got to understand, God wants you to be so blessed, you have something for your neighbor. Amen. Hallelujah. And I live next door. Now, <laughs> I live next door to somebody. Now, turn, turn with me over here to Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. Hallelujah. And let's go down here to uh, verse 8. Amen. To me who am less than the least of all saints, Paul, Paul was pretty uh, humble, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. How I many know oh, it's all finished? 
Amen. Verse 9. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world has been hidden in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. God created everything and then He rested. Jesus provided everything back and then <laughs> He cried out, it is finished. Verse 10. To the intent that now, now, to the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold, multiplied wisdom of God. Amen. According to the eternal purpose He purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness now and access with confidence by the faith of of Jesus. Come on, somebody. Amen. So in other words, we have boldness and access because we have faith. Amen. We believe. We trust. We, we, we believe His Word is the truth. And when He has a precious promise, we rest in it boldly. Come on, somebody. We have access the, old, the windows are opening. God's reigning because we're believing. We're, I mean, somebody said, well, I, I believe we'll never have a house like that. It's so nice. Well, you have what you say. We, we, we can get that way. Well, we'll never, see, we'll never get that. We, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see how we could ever have a car like that. You won't. <laughs> Why? Because you have what you say. You have what you believe. Right. Amen. 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 Now, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean you have to have a, a, a fancy car. It just means if there's something you you desire in your life, God will make a way. Come on, somebody. Amen. But you can't you can't sit back and say, well, you know, I I, I, I just can't believe my God's big enough. You serve a big God. Amen. I said you serve a big God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this good news, it's a good news whereby we are walking in God's blessing now. Amen. Just as if Adam never sinned. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Go down here, verse 19. Verse 19. And to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. We're talking about human knowledge there. That you might be filled with all the fullness of God. So in other words, it's saying that you would be filled with all of His wisdom, all of His knowledge, to get to a point where you are walking in the fullness of God. How many know that Adam was being groomed in sonship? Uh, Eve was being groomed. They were learning of the tree of life. They were learning of wisdom to walk in the fullness of God just, <laughs> just like God. They were created to be in His image, after His likeness, to go into this earth and take dominion. Dominion of what? Earth. Dominion of what? Everything that's in this earth. Hallelujah. If it's all about getting to heaven, then there's no reason for dominion. If it's all about getting to heaven, then there's no reason to live as a Christian. It's not about getting to heaven. It's about being born again. Amen. It's about becoming a Christian. It's about having purpose. It's about having a destiny. It's about doing good works. It's about encouraging one another. It's about living on this earth and loving one another. Come on, somebody. Yes. If all we're ever thinking about is getting to heaven, we'll never, you know, Maranatha, we're going on. Praise God. Let's live in a cave. So, you know, uh, right. I always think that's strange. These people that think the rapture is going to be tomorrow, they go run and live in a cave. Yeah. I'm not going to be in a cave if the rapture is happening. I want, I, I'm not going to bump my head. <laughs> All right, you're in the spirit. You're not going to bump your head. But it's just not weird. It's just weird. I want to be, I, I'll tell you what, God, <laughs> God, never mind. Glory to God. <laughs> 
I'm having too much fun. We, we, but we've got to realize that God is a big God. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm. I love the next verse. I'm going to read it. Now unto him, Jesus, that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that's working in us. That power is the Holy Spirit. It's working in us right now, exceeding abundantly above. His wisdom will give you things that are beyond what you can comprehend. Amen. His wisdom is beyond what you can comprehend. It's not your wisdom. It's not what you can do. It's not... And when you enter into that rest, He's right there to help you. Amen. Yes. I remember it would be a birthday or Christmas and we'd buy a bicycle or something for the girls. And it might be a playhouse or something like that. I'd build the thing and we'd have extra parts. I don't know. I think they send you extra parts so you have in case one of them goes bad. <laughs> and uh, now Kathleen, she didn't have that ability because when she put it together, there was no extra parts. <laughs> I would go to her because she had the wisdom. Plus, I got out of doing it. <laughs> but I realized <laughs> there was a rest. <laughs> there was a rest because she had the wisdom. She had the ability. She was able to just do it. And everything, I mean, she's like... A goes to B with C and takes Z and I'm like in what language is this in? And she could she could read that paper and it was in Chinese I'm telling you and she could read it and it, she just it's like okay these and she would put all the parts all the A's go here all the B's go there and all this this go here and, and she's like okay now it says A and I go over to A well, start with the wheel. No, you start with A. And she just, I mean, she's going systematically and just, and when it's done, it's beautiful. When God does all of these things in His wisdom, we enter into a rest because He knows what He's doing. Amen. He knows how to do it. But let me tell you something. I was being groomed by this woman. <laughs> and now I know how to do it just as good as her. <laughs> I do, I really do. And, but I tell you, I, I've gotten to a point, though, by watching her, I know how not to have extra pieces. Because <laughs> she, she trained me on how to place things and take my time and make sure that everything is in the right spot. And, and she gave me the wisdom on that so that now I can do it. Better than her. And so, <laughs> amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Turn with me over here to Proverbs chapter 4. God will give you wisdom and it'll just, <laughs> it'll just bring you into a rest and things will work out. Proverbs chapter 4. Let's go down here to verse 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. The literal Hebrew is wisdom is the first thing. Wisdom is the first thing you seek. Amen. Wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the first thing that you seek. You don't seek uh, you know, a lot of us, we seek the wrong thing first. Come on, somebody. We, and then when that doesn't work, then we go to God. Right. Yeah. 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 How many know if we'll seek first God's way of doing it, it'll just work. Amen. And there'll be no stress. There'll be no, you know, confusion. There, there, I mean, you just, you'll enter into this thing and there'll be a rest. And you'll go, wow, why didn't I do it that way before? Amen. Why didn't I just do it that way? I, we wanted these monitors to work for uh, the praise and worship. Uh, we have got monitors down here. They weren't even plugged in. And this one was plugged in, but it was plugged into the back of that speaker. So it wasn't, it wasn't doing anything except bringing some sound over there. I mean, they couldn't, we couldn't adjust anything. So I'm over here about six hours yesterday running cable in the ceiling so we could have monitors this morning. 
<laughs> and, uh, but there were times where I could not figure out how to do it. There were certain things I had to plug in, certain adapters, certain things to make it work. And I sat back and I said to the Lord, I need your help. I need your help. The ceiling tiles had to go through each individual one. And, and there were times where they would not go back into their square. <laughs> and I would say, Lord, I need your help. And they'd just go. <laughs> they would just drop in. There was angels on the other side. I don't know, but it, they, I didn't do anything. I did just, and I, would, I got to the point where I just kept saying, Lord, I need your help on this. It won't go down. And, 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 then, and sometimes the Lord would just tell me, tap right here. And I'd tap right there and it'd go down. I mean, he was just helping me. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And I needed help. <laughs> but let me tell you something. You can enter into a rest where it just works. Where life works. Amen. Whatever you're doing, it begins to work. And, and it's not a stressful thing. It's a good thing. And you're having fun. Come on, somebody. Isn't it good to have some fun? So it says, the first thing you seek is wisdom. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all your getting, get understanding. How many know there's a how to do some things? How many know we need to know the how? Hallelujah. We've got to get over into the how. We've got to, we've got to understand some things. Um, exalt her, and she shall promote you. She shall bring you to honor when you embrace her. She shall give to your head an ornament of grace. To your mind, it will give you rest. Hallelujah. A crown of glory shall she deliver to you. Wisdom will make you look good. <laughs> God, God will give you something to say and, and they'll go, wow, that, that's deep. And you had nothing to do with it. Uh, <laughs> hallelujah. Uh, it says, hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of your life shall be many. Amen. If you want to go to heaven tomorrow, don't get wisdom. <laughs> because if you get wisdom, it will add years to your life on earth. Right. Amen. How many of you know God planted, planted you on earth so you would be a beautiful flower? God put you into this earth so that you could grow and be blessed and, and, and enter into the greatness of, of, of everything He designed that He created. He created the earth for you. Amen. Hallelujah. When we go to heaven, we will go. If you, if you did, died tomorrow, God forbid, you would be absent from your body. You'd be present with the Lord. I've been there. I painted a painting of what I saw. But let me tell you something. You would be there so that you would be waiting for an event that's going to take place in heaven. It's called the marriage supper of the Lamb. Now, if you're still alive when that event happens, you will not miss it. You'll be caught up together with Him in the air and go to the event. But after that event, you come right back here. To rule and reign with Him for a thousand years, a millennium, on planet Earth. Why? Because you were made for Earth. Right. You were made to make a difference tomorrow. You were made to make a difference this week, yeah. this month, this year. You're, you're made to come and, 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 and be the salt. Come on, somebody. You were made to be the light. You were made to be the light of the world. You were made to be His children, taking dominion of this earth and making a difference. Yeah. We're not just existing. We're not just, you know, we're the children of God. Amen. And we're going to make a difference. And we're going to make a difference in Rockwall. We're going to make a difference in Dallas. We're going to make a difference in Texas. We're going to make a difference in this country. And we're going to make a difference in this world. Amen. Why? Because we're the children of God. We've got purpose. We've got destiny. Amen. And if you get wisdom, God adds years to your life. Why? Because wisdom will give you a reason <laughs> to do whatever you're doing. 
And it'll give you the how and it'll give you the way and it'll give you it and God will be right there cheering you on and giving you everything you need. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Verse 13. I'll go back to verse 12. When you go, your steps shall not be straightened. And when you run, you shall not stumble. Take fast hold. Fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is your life. Amen. Everybody say life. life. Turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Now this is the blessing chapter. This is Abraham's blessing. This is, this is, it really spelled out what the blessing is, what the curse is. How many know we've been redeemed from the curse? Amen. Hallelujah. That means you're no longer in curse, you're in blessing. Amen. Notify your face. Hallelujah. <laughs> Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. And it shall come to pass, oh, I like that, if you shall hearken, if you shall seek, everybody say seek. seek. How many know we're seeking first the kingdom of God? If you shall hearken or seek diligently to the voice of the Lord your God to observe and to do all His Torah, all His Word, it's talking about His Word, which I command you this day, that, you, that the Lord your God will set you on high above all nations of the earth and all these blessings shall come on you and overtake you if you shall hearken to the voice of the Lord your God. In other words, you're listening to Him and not to what everybody else is saying. Amen. His rhema word. The word rhema in the Greek, it literally means the spoken word of God. When God begins to speak to you and you know it. Amen. You can be reading the word of God and, and it's just Greek to you. I mean, you're just like, oh, I'm not getting much out of it. And then suddenly God just breathes it and, and the, it lights up and it makes sense. Amen. And the wisdom of God pours out of it. And you start reading it and you say, yeah, woo. And, and that's when it goes from Logos, just a word, to Rhema. Yeah. God is speaking to you. Amen. Well, let me tell you something. God is speaking to you this morning. God's trying to get you to enter into that rest. Enter into that wisdom. Enter into His kingdom. Amen. Where good things have been planned and they are finished. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's already done. It's already done. Now, I want you to notice something here. It says, if you listen to His voice... Everybody say wisdom. wisdom. If you listen to his wisdom, all these blessings, not just some of them, all these blessings shall come on you. But they'll not just come on you, they will overtake you. Amen. You know what that implies? That they're already here. They're already here. It's already finished. But it will overtake you. And you had nothing to do with it. Come on, somebody. Uh, they're already here, and, 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 and it's already there, and it's already finished. But, but they'll overtake you. I remember when we had that Cadillac. I, mm, that was a good-looking car. We, uh, it was, I liked it. Glory to God. But it went from beautiful car to bomb. And, and, and you know what? I didn't desire a Jaguar. It wasn't even on my radar list. I mean, I... I, I I like that Cadillac. When that car the engine blew up, <laughs> I mean, it had a cloud before us, a cloud behind us, and, and we went in the glory, but it finally gave up the ghost. A guy calls me on the phone and says, uh, Brother Backer, he said, do you have need of a car? I'm thinking, does this guy got a camera on me? <laughs> I said, yeah. He said, the Lord woke him up last night. He said, the Lord woke him up and uh, uh, I'm supposed to give you my car. I said, praise God. I said, my car just blew up. He said, do you have a garage? I said, yeah. I said, why? He said, well, it's kind of a nice car. I wanted to make sure you had a garage. And I said, well, what kind of car is it? He says, it's a Jag. I said, I'll be right there. <laughs> I wasn't even looking for a Jag. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, I'm not talking about... When we work our faith, 
things will come on us. When we enter into rest, they'll overtake us. Amen. Are you seeing this? There will be times where it will happen and you had nothing to do with it. It wasn't even mixed with faith. You weren't even, it wasn't even on your radar, but God just blesses you. Amen. There's a blessing like that that's about to come to you. Come on, somebody. There's a blessing that's about to come to you that, that mm, it'll, just, it'll just rain on your house. Amen. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No indication of rain. You don't see a cloud. I mean, there is a cloud far off, and it's about the size of a man's hand. But I'm telling you, it's about to rain. Come on, somebody. Amen. Something's about to happen. Glory to God. And you can read all of the uh, blessings in in that if you read on blessed in the city blessed in the field blessed in the in the shoe store and on but let's let's go down here to uh, let's end in Isaiah 51 let's go to area 51 <laughs> area oops. Isaiah 51 and let's let's just start in verse 1 Isaiah 51, verse 1. Hallelujah. Isaiah 51, verse 1. Hearken, there's that word again. Hearken to me, you that follow after righteousness. There, there it is again. Talking about seeking, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Seeking God and His righteousness. <clears throat> Hearken to me, you that follow after righteousness. You that seek, everybody say seek, seek, the Lord. Look to the rock where you are hewn and to the hole of the pit from where you are dug. In other words, you were made from the dust. You were, look to the foundations. Look to everything that I have set into place. Verse 2. Now look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah that, that bore you, for I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. So he says, I want you to seek me, seek my righteousness. I want you to know the foundation of that everything, that how it was created, how it was finished. And I want you to seek and know Abraham and know he was blessed. Amen. And he increased Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. He says, this is what I want you to know. I want you to know that, <laughs> that you're blessed. I want you to know you've been redeemed. I want you to know me. I want you to know my wisdom. I want you to know my right standing. And I want you to examine Abraham. Now, verse 3. For the Lord shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places. How many know you're not supposed to be in lack? You're not supposed to have waste places. You're supposed to have abundant places. Amen. It says he will comfort all her waste places and he will make her wilderness like Eden. Everybody say Eden. Eden. The word Eden means abundance in Hebrew. Amen. So God is trying to get us back to where Adam was before the fall. We are redeemed of the curse just as if Adam never sinned. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You're in right standing right now. Not because of anything you did, but because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. You are in right standing to walk in this earth just like Adam was from the foundation. So examine the foundation. Examine how Adam was to walk before the fall. And you will see it in Revelation of Abraham. You will see the blessing of what the abundance of Eden, not a place of lack, but a place of abundance. I'm trying to get it to you. I'm trying to get you into your promised land. I'm trying to get you to where everybody on earth is going to say, I want to be like you. Amen. Not just sitting back saying, well, you know, well, you know, some glad morning we'll see streets of gold. Some glad morning we'll be in a mansion. If it's wrong here, it's wrong there. Right. Amen. 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 No, the fact of the matter is, God wants to bless you. You're not in a curse. You're in a blessing. Amen. You're just like Adam was from the foundation. He was to take dominion of this earth and everything in it. He was to be blessed going in and blessed going out. And Abraham finally entered into that. 
And now God says, I want you to examine that so that now rain will come on all of your wilderness. And now your garden will be like the garden of the Lord. You will have Eden restored in your life. Amen. Eden's supposed to be restored in your life. Yeah. Not some glad morning, but this morning. Eden is here, but you've got to seek it. Eden is here. Abundance is here. The word Eden means abundance. God's trying to get you into where you don't lack in anything. Amen. You don't lack in anything anything. You excel. You, you're promoted. You're increasing. The blessing is multiplication and increase. Amen. To be fruitful and multiply. And God's trying to get you to a point where you're blessed going in and blessed going out and blessed in the city and blessed you're the head and not the tail. Above and not beneath. Come on somebody. You are, everything you set your hand to now is blessed. Amen. And you expect it. You're not worried about it. You're not in fear of it. But you are taking dominion of this earth as the children of God. And you're going in the love of God. And as you increase, you're able to bless. Hallelujah. And the multiplication of the blessing goes around the world. And let me tell you something. Nobody's going to want some holy cow in India when they realize... <laughs> <laughs> when they realize the truth. Amen. Come on, somebody. When they realize, come on, somebody, that we have the good news. Amen. Say, I have, I have the, good the good news. I will seek, I will seek God's, way God's way of doing things. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I don't have waste places. I, have I have abundance. I have abundance. I have a garden. And I'm going to plant the seeds of wisdom. The seed of the Word of God in my heart. And I thank you, Lord, that I am going to, to prosper and be blessed so I can be a blessing. Thank you, Lord, for your wisdom. And thank you, Lord, for your rest. I enter into that rest and I enter into that wisdom. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God.